to work. Let's start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Uh, let the record reflect that uh, Director Hofstede is not currently here tonight. I do not have any board chair comments. So we will move into uh, approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I so move to approve the agenda. Second. Motion was made by Director Hackett and seconded by Director Bauman. Any discussion? All right, all in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5-0. Appreciation, recognition, and presentations. Uh, Chairperson Garrett, board members, Dr. Workow. I am going to recognize Joan Nichols. Joan has been a long time special education teacher at her school, and she was a founding member. I, I should add, I think Joan's online, couldn't be here in person. Uh, she's a founding member of our opportunity team from kindergarten through grade five. And the opportunity team is a team of teachers who work together to help support other teachers with behavior and academic problems with individual students. So if I'm a teacher and I'm struggling with a student, not sure what interventions to use, I go to the opportunity team. They meet weekly and uh, get some support and advice on how to best support that uh, student. And there's really good documentation with everything. So when interventions are tried, there's data collected, and you have to apply to appear before the opportunity team. So it's really well thought out. So Joan took the initiative to start an opportunity team at the preschool. And she brought that idea to us last spring. So some planning was done last spring and they've started the opportunity now, team now in the fall for the preschool teachers. And so the preschool teachers now have some place to go with concerns for the students. And the whole idea of all of this is catching problems early, providing support and intervention and making a difference for the students. So uh, congratulations, Joan. And uh, thank you for your leadership. Chairman Garrett's member of the board, members of the board, Superintendent Wehrkamp. Um, I'd like to recognize Andrew Hagman. Uh, this summer, late, late this summer, uh, the math department and I were in a meeting trying to figure out if it was about time to start coming up with a plan B for not getting a sub in the math classroom. Um, it was involving tearing the schedule apart and lining up any math teacher we could with open preps and doing overloads and not an ideal situation. And they had had a conversation with Andrew earlier in the, in the school year, early, later in the spring, and we're just kind of teasing him about stepping in and helping out in the math position. Well, we got to the point where we happened to have an, a, a, while we were meeting, he was in the office. And so we brought him in and started having a conversation about it. And uh, he was said he'd be willing to step up and help out. Um, and so he did step into the sub position. He will be working with us until December 9th. Um, having been a rookie teacher, even in my own trained field, the world was a blur. And now to have a teacher stepping into a position um, that is far, uh, Andrew is a PE phi ed teacher by training and stepping into a middle school math position um, is a, uh, a huge step. And he has done a tremendous job with it. Uh, he has great classroom control. Um, he puts a lot of time in getting himself comfortable teaching the concepts and being able to work with the kids. Um, he 
he has some anxiety about the fact that he's only about three minutes ahead of the kids. <laughs> that is pretty normal for a first year teacher as you're going through it. Um, but I am just have been very impressed with the way that he's handled that position and the content and the classroom management. And uh, so I thought it would be very deserving of uh, recognition for Andrew Hagman to be recognized by the board for his step up in this position. Thank you. Did they both not attend because they knew about our picture policy? <laughs> Maybe. So we'll have to show up. Mm -hmm. No, thanks. Uh, great examples. Thanks, guys. Um, next, we'll move on to recognition of citizens uh, for input purposes. Uh, let me go. The board, Royalton Board of Education allows public participation in a meeting. At the same time, has the responsibility of con conducting our business in orderly fashion. Um, We'll give everybody a lot of time. Please focus on the board. Please don't uh, refrain from any charges or complaints against individuals or employees of the district. Um, basically, it's our time to listen to anybody for the public who has comment for us. So anybody who care to uh, uh, give us input? Anybody? Seeing there's nobody in attendance. We will move on to reports and news, and we will start with uh, board committee reports. Mr. Chairman, so uh, policy committee met. Um, we're going to have a big night of approval tonight. Um, most of the policies that we reviewed, we've been reviewing for months. Um, they're all, all on third readings that, that, we, that we went through. Um, we didn't change anything. We just just went through them again and talked about them. Um, we'll be doing the tobacco-free environment, um, student surveys, and then the forum for the student surveys, curriculum development. Um, and that one, we basically changed it to the strategic planning committee is going to be the head committee there. Um, 609 is the religion one. And then the 709 student transportation safety policy, and then the form for that. Um, we've all seen them before, so there's no big changes uh, from the last meeting. So, thank you, Director Hackett. Finance committee. Yep, finance committee met. Um, we'll kind of cover in their presentation tonight what we did. Um, in the middle of the audit, so looking for results on that is finished up. How about mid state Mary? Did were you able to do <clears throat> yes? I went to the last meeting with that. Um, and Christine was there also, one of the few superintendents who were there, by the way. But um they they have been doing some really great work in that mid state building, and I think that. If you please, I encourage you each and every one of you to go into that building, call ahead and ask them to tour it because it's phenomenal the work they do with those children. It is. And with their parents and families, it's amazing. I mean, these kids are very, very challenged. And yet they know some of the teachers, they know every child's name in that building. You know, they're right there to greet them when they come in and greet them when they go home. And it's it's a it's a marvelous atmosphere. I've never seen anything quite like it, especially with kids with those kinds of challenges. It's amazing and you need to see it. It's what the heart of education I feel is about. Do you have anything to add to that? No, I would agree. It's it's really important. I think if board members get an opportunity to go visit that site, um, setting for placement is is different than what it, the general education setting is, and so it's a really good opportunity to learn um, what goes into serving children well in that setting. And I think uh, plus that building is is just lovely. Um, I think it was the right move that the member districts made in housing it at one spot. So yeah, I would encourage that. It's amazing. Yeah, please go if you can. Superintendent report. Yeah, so thank you. Um, 
First of all, I'd like to thank all of our custodial staff for all the hard work that they do. October 2nd was our custodial appreciation day. And as you can see, our building is very, very well maintained both inside and out. And that is because of the hard work of our custodial staff led by Tony DeVille. And he's here tonight to present on other construction projects. And I'd like to thank him as well for all of his work in leading that group. Um, again, it's, it's really, I take great pride in being able to come here to work every day because when I pull up in our parking lots, either one, it's lovely. And that's not always the case everywhere. So. I appreciate that our staff take pride in that work. Um, also, just want to give everyone an update that um, we have our uh, high school activities, uh, athletics moving into section play. And so we have cross country at Piers on Thursday. We have volleyball um, at Cathedral on Thursday as well at seven. And then Saturday afternoon at two o'clock will be the football game first, their first game of session they had to buy. So that's always fun. I like those Saturday afternoon games, get an opportunity. Hopefully the weather will, you know, be good to us that day and we can pull out wins across all of those areas. Um, otherwise, we did just come back from MEA. I think it felt really good this year as we approached MEA. Um, everybody, of course, is ready for that, but nobody felt, I didn't hear, oh my gosh, I need it. That word need wasn't used. It was, oh, this is great. We're going to go have MEA and then we'll come back and everybody's back and ready to go. And it's been a really good start to the year this fall. So, um, yeah, that's about all I have. Thank you. Business manager report. Uh, Chair Jarens, uh, members of the board, Superintendent Weirkamp. Um, the budget update uh, will cover the first quarter of this year already. Um, uh, we can go right into the next slide. Um, enrollment is trending at 959 ADM as of the 5th of October. Um, our adopted budget, uh, just to remind everyone, was set at 920 ADM and we're continuing to track that closely. Revenues are uh, tracking ahead of last year's trend uh, to the tune of about $856,000. This is mostly state aid and some uh, federal uh, revenues carried over from CARES draws that have now hit the books in 23. Now we can go on to the expense slide. <laughs> okay. Oh, one more down. I have to go down one more? Yeah. That one? Yep. Okay. Yep. So expenses are tracking $571,000 ahead of last year's pace at this time. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, due in part to capital equipment purchases that, uh, using PMA funds and the ESSER funding. Um, also, um, uh, HVAC expenditures. So that project is spanning last year and this year. And I have another slide to show the breakdown of that. And then we spent 131,000 in prepaids at the end of last school year that we've now moved over to the 23 books. And that was to try to stay ahead of any supply chain delays as we entered the new school year. Next slide, please. Oh, we can go one more actually. So with the HVAC project, I was just speaking with Tony and he says we're about 95% complete on the project. Um, these numbers are as of the 5th of October and we are um, actually in a very good position with that. So totals, uh, total expenditures of 424,000 thus far, um, 154,000 still uh, remaining within the budget. So uh, we're looking in very good position with that project at the moment. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Click here. Principal reports. Good evening, Adam. 
Uh, we have parent teacher conferences coming up November 3rd and 7th from 415 to 8. And our goal is always to have 100% attendance. We normally come pretty close to that and then do follow ups after that for those that we miss. Uh, on Wednesday, I'm taking six teachers, pre K through two, to the Early Literacy Leaders Academy at Sourcewell. And our focus for the day of training is on teaching writing to young children, kindergarten through grade two. So it's our second year participating in the academy. And we began with a strong look at phonics, and now we've moved into teaching writing, and that's also connected. November 11th is PTO Bingo at 6.30 in the cafetorium. Everyone's invited. We have our Halloween parade at the elementary on Monday, October 31st at 2 o'clock. We're going to have an outside parade again because it went so well doing it outside last year. The weather cooperates. Uh, and just to mention and to thank our teachers, this year we have four student teachers to be working at our school, and we typically have anywhere from two to four. So it's a great opportunity to meet new people, learn new ideas, and it's a way to give back to the teachers who also were mentored by other teachers. And our November 14th in service, we'll continue to work on integrating our language, English language arts into the curriculum. So it's curriculum work again. And uh, that's been our main focus. And we're going to stay focused on that to the end of the school year. We've made a lot of progress and we're hoping we might complete it by the end of the year. So that's our big dream goal. Any questions? I have questions. Yes. So when you take this team to Sourcewell, are they the same teachers that it was last year, or is it different ones? It's the same teachers. It's a three-year commitment, and there's representatives at each grade level K through two, plus our reading support teacher and our Title I lead teacher. So then when they come back, do they kind of try to spread what they learned to the, to the teams then? Yes, that's the plan. Okay. And so we work at that. They also, we also have a consultant from Sourcewell who works with us in an ongoing way and who does coaching within the classroom for those teachers. So working to apply what's been learned. So those are great questions and glad I can answer yes to each one of them. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Good evening again. Uh, we have parent-teacher conferences on November 17th and 21st. Uh, these will be by appointment. Uh, the appointment schedule will open on November 1st for parents to schedule a conference with anybody, any teacher that they want. They can schedule if they want to meet with all seven. They can, if they can get it in the schedule, they have that uh, opportunity. Um, a little different in the past, we would do a single night of fall conferences, our student-led conference two nights in the winter, and then a single night of parent-teacher conferences in the end of April. We have taken them this year and put, right now, at this time, is a great intervention time for students. You know, you can reach them at a point where we can still uh, make some good strides with them. So we took that end of April and moved it into November and made two nights so uh, all parents can get an opportunity to visit with as many teachers as they would like. Um, the curriculum review cycle, the departments that are on the cycle and schedule this year have started doing their research and, and developing um, their ideas for what they would like their curriculum items to, to look like. They have a deadline to compile this material by February 1st, where we'll start funneling it into the curriculum review process with board and parents and strategic planning committee and then and then get that stuff ready to go so we can have it ready to go for the fall. Uh, we did our first round of fast bridge testing here about three weeks ago. Um, it was the first time six through eight that we had done fast bridge um, in our PLCs on Wednesday morning. Uh, the teachers, uh, uh, Nicole Cole came in and helped the teachers run through the reports and look at the data and see what they tell us. Um, it's a one, it's a single point in time, but it's something that if you triangulate it with MCAs and grades and things you're seeing in class and FastBridge starts to paint a picture of the students that we're dealing with and gives us opportunities and ideas for areas where they might need work. Uh, we had, I was excited. Uh, we always get requests from St. Cloud State, St. Ben's, St. John's um, for 
like Dr. Gerbata said, student teachers, we also get the, a part of the undergrad training is a 20 hour observation where they come into schools and, and observe teachers kind of as the, let's just say dipping your toe in the pool to check the temp, see if that's a career move that you would like. And uh, I like when our teachers volunteer themselves to be mentors. Uh, I think it says a lot about your teaching staff when they're comfortable enough to have trainees come in and observe their classroom. And so when I put the last one out, St. Cloud State was looking for seven or eight placements in multiple different areas. And we had like five or six teachers volunteer to be uh, observation sites for those students, which is critical for those education programs to be able to have placements for those students to get them what they need. So I'm excited that our teachers were uh, willing and able to jump in and take an observation student. And then uh, the last one is uh, we just recently did a, there's a video from our PBIS group on our preferred student parking spot. We had a, we have a preferred student parking, a Royalton Royal student parking spot in the North parking lot. It's got a sign and uh, we do a drawing every two weeks. If the student has a clean discipline record and has not been cited in 30 days, they're eligible for a drawing. And we have a big wheel with all the students and uh, we spin it and we vet them out to make sure that they make it. And if they do, they win that parking spot for a few weeks. And so we had our first one and we did the video and had the little script and everything. If you haven't had a chance to look at it, um, I think it's on our, um, I can share with the board members if you'd like to see the video. It's about a seven minute video. It's pretty well done. It's pretty, pretty fun. Um, but we just had our first drawing. And so we had a junior boy win the uh, student parking spot for the first for the first round. And we will continue doing that throughout the school year. Any questions? All right, thank you. Athletic director report. <laughs> Chair Garrett, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Bordkamp. Um, as we end our regular season, we enter a section play, as Dr. Bordkamp said. Um, junior high programs are all wrapped up, and um, we're, we've been blessed with some favorable weather. Um, even looking ahead to Saturday, it looks beautiful for a, for a fall day. So uh, looking forward to those. A big thing that has been a change with, uh, with the high school league is we can stream the game on Friday free before you have to pay or semifinal game of $500, provided we don't have um, any advertising on there. So the advertising we have, we've got to remove <clears throat> for that one game, but at least we're able to stream it for free for those that don't want to come. The other thing that the region is pushing, just so you know, for section play is um, online ticket sales. It's $8 for adults, $5 for students. But if you want to pay cash the door, it's $10 for adults, $5 for students. So they're, they're really trying to push hard. Um, they did it last year, last spring, and they had some good success with it. I think they they had only a couple hundred dollars at the door, rather than everyone else was, was at the at the gate for online. So we'll have scanners for those um, on Saturday, but I guess that, that's the route that that they want to go. So other than that, um, moving into winter seasons, yes, we're section play, we're still in fall seasons, but I got to think ahead to winter as well, and. Uh, junior high girls will start next Monday on Halloween, and then um, girls basketball will start the 20, the, the, the uh, 14th, and then wrestling and boys basketball will start the week of Thanksgiving on the 21st, um, and then off we go. We get busy, busy December, busy January. We have our band concert, our first band concert on November 7th, Monday the 7th, um, two, two slots for those, six o'clock and then the seven o'clock show. So those will be in the South gym. Um, there's nothing on the eighth for election day. Um, so nothing in the school from 68 p.m. And then um, we'll start, we'll go on. So. <coughs> what I like to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's crazy, it's, it's coming. Yep. Come on, pass. Any other questions for? Mr. Newman. Thank you. We will move down the agenda to the uh, approval of the consent agenda. And this includes the approval of the regular meeting minutes from September 26th, uh, claims, accounts, and financials, 
approval of resignations and approval of new hires. As a reminder, any we can take anything out if we want to, but I'm looking for motion. a motion. Harry, was that a motion? Motion to approve consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Director Roaring. Any discussion on the consent agenda? All right. All in favor of um, approval of the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5 0. We'll move to the building improvements update. Gary Garrett's members of the board, superintendent for camp. Um, Christine and I worked on this um, great little PowerPoint here. <laughs> Help me right through this. <laughs> um, scope of work um, for this. This has all happened last summer. Um, Air Handler 4, which serves the art, health, and choir classrooms. We replaced that. That was a 52 year old machine so it was it was time um enjoying air conditioning and better airflow and control in those areas now uh, elementary classrooms and gymnasium and gymnasium are air conditioned now um at the high school here we replaced boiler number two we have four boilers down in the boiler room uh, boiler number two um had a cracked heat exchanger which is basically a dead sentence for a boiler um, good news on that, if you don't mind me sharing, that boiler the, it costed us $68,200 for that boiler. And I just finished the rebate paperwork through Excel Energy and we'll be getting a check back from them for $18,900. Wow, that's wonderful. Good job, Tony. It's a good thing. Uh, timeline, we uh, did demolition of the old unit um, of the uh, Air handler number four, almost their kids are jumping on the bus and these guys are coming on. So it's pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Um, completed in mid October. Um, there, when the kids got here, we had the air, air handler was spinning and, and moving air and we had air conditioning. But the uh, the final part is now done. The, the heat is running too. So. Uh, elementary project is, is wrapped up. Um, there is one little back ordered piece that goes on each of the air conditioners in the gymnasium that will allow us to interface with the um, our heating and cooling control so I can see it on our screen and control. Um, that's that's it. And so everything's wrapped up nicely. Um, longevity of the equipment, um, the, the big air handler, I'm assuming should last as long as they have a good 50 years. And um, the uh, lifespan, of air conditioning is generally about 20 years, you know, I mean, plus or minus, of course, we have lots of them, so, yeah. Um, kitchen, our elementary kitchen remodel. Um, we installed some uh, re repurposed appliances from the North Kitchen at the high school here over there. We put in uh, the Blodgett, um, what's it called, the combi oven, it's a natural gas appliance. Um, working very nice for Sharon. Uh, we also moved in a double Vulcan um, convection oven, giving her over double the cooking capacity in the small kitchen. And if something breaks down, it's we're all covered all the time. So it's, it's, it's a good thing. Um, the remodel of the serving line, um, we are taken care of electrically, but the we're waiting for a hot cart to uh, arrive. Apparently stainless steel is still struggling from like COVID back orders and stuff. So sometime in February, we hope to see this hot cart. And if there's any window of opportunity where I can bring in the uh, fabricators to redo the stainless steel so we can park a cold cart and a hot cart, um, really gonna make a big difference for the kitchen staff over there. Um, 
Yeah, yeah everything is moving along nicely. Um, North Stage, that project is um, wrapped up also. We built the, I don't know if everyone has had a chance to walk through there, but we built a wall on, on the North Stage that would take the place of the curtain. So it's all solid now. Um, we installed new doors on the east and west entries of the stage, uh, allowing that space to be used for for other things too. We, um, each door on the east and west has the they call them the push bar, the crash bar for for uh, I got I got the uh, fire marshal's input on this too. So if we were to make that into a space, we're all ready to go. Um, currently, we use it for uh, storage, but has potential for classroom athletic space. Safety and support, uh, adding the wall, where we have much better supervision of the of the gym, keeps the stray balls from flying onto the stage and students from, from being up there. Um, a greenhouse upgrade, scope of work, we installed a concrete slab on the west side of the greenhouse, um, much cleaner look. Um, there was some landscape rocks and whatnot that we had put in there it was actually the landscape rock was old rock that we had taken off the roof. And um, every time we went by with the snowplow, we would grab a load of that rock and it ended up in the football field. So <laughs> it took care of that problem. And it also made a very nice uh, display area for when they do their sale. Um, we intend to install a uh, water line and a natural gas line underground to the greenhouse that is going to make um, just uh, ergonomically be a nicer building to operate. The, we won't have to worry about the propane tank and then the water we can leave on year round. We plan on putting a like a agriculture style hydrant out there so it won't freeze. Um, and the and the natural gas upgrade, of course, uh, hoping the price of things go down. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, for the comparison between propane and natural gas is still enough to make it worth doing. So. Routine repairs and upgrades. Um, we purchased a commercial pressure washer for the bus garage. It's uh, a, a 240 volt commercial unit that uh, also dispenses detergent or soap onto the buses and vans. Uh, very nice. No, no more. <clears throat> it used to be quite cumbersome to wash a vehicle up there. You had to bring the gas pressure washer out, run the garden hose to it. You know, we do it now. You do it at home, and uh, it was it was cumbersome. Now we have a just click the switch. We got 150 feet of hose hooked up to it, and you go. So it's really made it nice for the taking care of their vehicles. Uh, and we still installed a concrete sidewalk and play area concrete slab just out here by the. The uh, ECC playground. Now um, we're completely compliant as far as ADD or anything wheelchair accessible to the playground. Uh, much nicer path for <clears throat> for us to plow snow on and everything too for keeping that open out there. So it was a nice upgrade. Um, we installed uh, eight electric hand dryers in the North Commons restrooms. There's Commons on the north and south end of the Commons up there. Um, incredible how much cleaner those bathrooms are without the paper towel wars going on so it's uh, been a good thing and the, the money that we're going to save on uh, paper towel purchases too is is definitely making a difference looking at more of those in the future um we updated and rearranged the uh, middle school computer lab um, i talked to miss berg just the other day and she really likes it so we yeah, totally switched them from north to south and added some more some more uh, tables and computer area. It's working well. Um, elementary stage, we got a new curtain. We actually got that hanging now over MEA break. We put it up. We did find some some of the little trolley rollers that are up in the trolley up there were actually melted <laughs> from that fire. So we have some of those coming, but we have enough of them out there to make the curtain functional. <laughs> Um, we added uh, wood mulch and, and more uh, sand in the um, elementary playground. Um, the wood mulch, we try to maintain an eight to 10 inch pack of wood mulch just for fall restraints and, 
and safety of the playground and that sand is in that bigger area of the playground where there's a drain in the middle so we we last year we put the cement curb around so now we're all tapered to our drain very nicely keeping our uh, storm water and everything else out of the neighbor's yard so <laughs> good for us good for them any questions Question. Sure. With the HVAC project, does that mean we now have air conditioning everywhere, or there's still spaces that there's down the road need to be addressed? There's still spaces that could be addressed. Yeah. Um, for instance, at the high school, the commons area in the north, just off of Joel's office there, and whatnot, where the lockers are and whatnot, that's not air conditioned. Um, the, you know, I'm calling junior high locker rooms. Are not air conditioned. Of course, the wood shop, metal shops, air conditioned. Um, there's a few spaces, you know, but high priority, probably not. But uh, elementary wise, that building is very well air conditioned. <laughs> Do you think with the air conditioning that we have now that, like, just the building will be with controlling the humidity? It'll just be a lot better for the building. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can tell already with the, the yeah. new air handler number four, like a, a art hallway. You used to be able to feel it right when you hit the band room, you'd, you'd run into a, a wall of heat. That has really subsided. So it's, yeah. And the elementary wide, too, just having air conditioning in all those classrooms that filters out into the corridors. So as the air is all problem. getting filtered, then, too, yeah. right? And then there's more air getting filtered. It's got to help everything, oh, yeah. dust and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a win win. It's a lot of equipment to take care of, but it's um, so. a lot of filters. A lot of filters. A lot of filters. Don't plan on squeezing my budget. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, do you have so this is maybe addition? Do you have are there other big projects? Maybe you don't know this yet, but I'm guessing you other things that are coming up that will need to be addressed in your mind. There still is about four air handlers that are 50 years old. Mm -hmm. um, the one that would be really nice to take care of is, is up by uh, Joel and Tony's office up there is uh, air handler number two is a 50 year old unit. The um, air conditioner that takes care of that area was installed in 1996. So that's already an old unit. It's hard to believe well, 96 is all it old, but it's um, aging. The actually the the um, refrigerant that's in that machine is called an R22. Very tough to get now. So that one's going to be coming. You know, sometime we'll have to plan for it. Um, boilers at the elementary school probably should be looked at sometime. We have uh, I call it the odd couple over there. One boiler. The smaller one is not big enough to take care of the building. It will heat the building down to about 30 degrees. After that, it can't, it won't handle it. So then the big one kicks in, which is not an efficient one. It's the old style tube boiler. It's not a, a high efficiency boiler, but it, it'll heat the building. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to look at some newer equipment over there. And those are you know, nearing the 25 year mark too. Just, so how, how come we? Got a rebate from Essential because the new boiler was that much more efficient. Um, they're really generous right now with rebates. <laughs> yeah, and actually yeah, the, the boiler, how, yeah, the boiler that, we replaced was hit the cost. Yeah, it was about the same efficiency. Yeah, the boiler we replaced was installed in 2003, and the newer one is obviously percentagely a little bit better, but not. It wasn't like we replaced a 50 year old. Yeah, totally okay. inefficient. Not like we're replacing the one that's over right. at the elementary. Yeah, so they're very gracious with their um, rebates. So it's a good thing. Even the HVAC equipment, um, I made a, a phone call to the Minnesota Power rebate specialist, and they came in and looked at our a new air handler four, and they looked at all the little air conditioners we put in at the elementary too, and we were receiving, I think it's close to $8,300 from them. Thank you for filling the paperwork out. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a matter of filling paperwork out, I'm sure. It's paperwork yeah. after paperwork. But yeah, yeah, it's playing a lot of information. Mm -hmm. It's worth it.
I think we're winning. Just a final thought too. I did have get feedback from somebody that drove by the school and I also kind of to comment on where uh, Dr. Brukamp talked about it, just commented that the facilities always look good. They were impressed with that. So kudos to you and your team too on that. So outsider had mentioned it. So I thought, oh, you know, that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. We take it for granted, but great job guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. They also spread, spread the word to the group. I think I is for them. The uh, the room got multiple comments from people that aren't in the area about oh. how it was. So it was nice to hear a proud moment. So. Mm -hmm. Good. Keep it going. <laughs> yeah. Other <laughs> questions or comments for Tony? He gets the brunt of all the comments and questions. All right. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we will move to approval of the strategic plan, including world's best workforce plan. Okay, so I will start us off, but I have a team of people um, with me tonight. Um, and the reason they're here is because these, the folks that are here help facilitate this work with our strategic planning committee. Um, a couple were not able, one, Morgan Prom is no longer with us right now, uh, but she did participate in the initial few meetings facilitating, and then Jeremy Shaw was not able to make it tonight, but he was another person that helped facilitate um, the meetings. So I, if we want to go to the next slide. Um, I just want to show that this is a slide that was presented pretty much each meeting, just to remind every committee member that was there, because you know not everyone can make it to every single meeting. And so just giving them a reminder of what our purpose was, the process, and what the ultimate goal. And so the goal is to provide a plan that sets a course for the district for the next three to five years. And I think that's what we have ready for you all to discuss and hopefully approve to the goal. So now I will turn it over to uh, Sherry Bishop who can start us off here. Chair Garrett's members of the board, Superintendent Wickham. Uh, Sherry Bishop. Um, so what you're seeing here are the meeting norms that we started every meeting with um, when we met with our strategic planning committee, uh, community members, staff members, um, these meeting norms were shared. And the goal was to make sure that everyone had a voice um, to be heard, whether that was in the large group or the small group. Um, so these are the four things that we focused on during that time. I get the next two. Um, <clears throat> the vision uh, during our first meeting back in April, um, a group had said that our, our vision was still solid and still intact. So the recommendation from that group was to keep it as is. The next one um, introduced in the April meeting and then um, did some reworking and then in May brought it out um, and then they retool it again and then they selected this mission mission statement on june 8th uh, we back in june and then we broke for summer um okay chair gary it's members of the board superintendent work camp um Amy Kruger, HR director, we then looked at um, moving on to kind of what was our, our next step. We had a bunch of like can do or will do statements and our group decided um, they wanted to really go to more of um, some core values. And so we really did a lot of work around core values and what core values speak to us. Um, we wanted something that would again span maybe even further than three to five years out. Um, so we did some small group work, large group work, and this is what we came up with for the different core values. We talked about the word royals and trying to incorporate that because we felt like that was super important to um, kind of who we are. Um, we surveyed um, the community members then. You can go to the next slide. And, and this is what that is what we came up with. We also then brought it back a number of different times um, and kind of played with how might this look um, if we were to display this, um, and then one of our community members came up with kind of this, using the different letters of royals to spell this out and how might that look. Um, and then on the bottom, we also spelled it out, how might it look kind of just a, at a landscape on a piece of paper versus like displaying it as a more of a, a picture type thing. 
Um, go ahead to the next slide. <clears throat> and then we also added it to our letterhead and how this could look with our letterhead um, using those, those words that we came up with um, as core values. Do I have one more slide? Nope, I'm good. Any questions on our core values? Clever. Very we like them. I did too. Can I am Absolutely. I do have to tell this story because <laughs> I know I tell it every time, but it just cracks me up. So we were just talking about these core values and these words, respect, honesty, integrity, leadership, accountability, and service worn out. However, integrity and accountability were flip-flopped. So at three o'clock in the morning or 2.30 in the morning, I get an email from Amy Kruger saying, what if we switch these words around because they look better if you have a blah, 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 blah. I couldn't sleep just thinking. And I thought to myself, what are you doing at three in the morning thinking about the core values for Rotten Public Schools? And then I thought, what am I doing reading the email at three o'clock in the morning? So I said, I'm not going to respond back. So anyway, just so you know, the integrity of the survey is intact and that these are the words that came out as the highest uh, words to be chosen. Their order is only shifted to make the look of them easier on a t-shirt and that kind of thing. And so we do thank Amy Kruger for that. <laughs> HR has made me really need to tap into my creativity. So that was my idea to <laughs> read no, Which, <laughs> so, which order did you And that only works at three o'clock in the morning? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I came out. I don't know. <laughs> Which one of the two are, they, are you going to use both the top and the bottom, or have you decided which one? The top one, I believe, went out with all the caps. Okay. Um, just looking at that plus line. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about the home of the rules if we actually discussed which of that font. I don't recall if we even talked about that as a final decision, but the, the top one about them all being capital. But the only thing we'd likely change is the comma next to integrity would likely be the gold, mm -hmm. just to be common comma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the next part are the world's best workforce schools. Um, so these are required by MDE as they have been in the past, um, but this is something that we brought forth to the committee to let them know that these are in place. This is what we're already working on and required by the state. So when we think about strategic planning goals, um, just know that these are already included in our plan. So be thinking about what other options you have. So then in April, a survey was sent out to the entire district um, so that uh, community members, parents, um, I mean, anyone, teachers, staff could take the survey and give their input to it. And so these were the top four opportunities that they wanted to see for students. And then the next slide, shows the four strategic priorities that came out of that survey as well. Chair Garrett's members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Werkamp. So through this whole process, whenever we had a meeting we always included a work time, and that work time was, uh, we used the World Cafe model. So we would first get into a small group, if you're not familiar with what that is. We would get into a small group, we would discuss whatever the topic is, write it down on poster, then we would have some time to share into the large group, make sure our ideas were understood and clear. We would hang these posters up, we would walk through, see these ideas again, discuss some more, and then bring it back to the large group, for final thoughts and final uh, share outs. And the reason we did it this way was to make sure everyone's voice was heard, especially in the small group setting, people are a lot more comfortable discussing and we were starting to get to know each other by then. So a lot easier for people to share their ideas. And then um, when we got to see everyone's ideas too, we were just, we got more ideas that way from everybody. Um, so you can see the strategic priority has the action steps. I'm not going to go through all of them, but this is how these ideas came about was through that sharing in the small group and in the large group. Um, I just like to add to, by working through this process, we were able to keep those meeting norms that we talked about at the beginning. So those were on the desk for everyone to see. 
um, all of the white paper, the posted papers, those big papers and all of their dots, and that's all saved. So we have that saved. We have all of our PowerPoints from each meeting saved. So once the strategic plan is approved, it will go online and all of this documentation will be saved. So if someone ever wants to go back and look at that, that will be there. Not to mention survey results were also always present um, for community members to see. So it's extremely transparent uh, in the process and, and anybody can go back and look at any of those records. Go back. <clears throat> Chair Garrett's members of the board, Superintendent Weir Camp, I'm uh, Jeff Shainer, uh math teacher here at Royalton. So one of my tasks, I was on this committee from day one and we went through in it, is a process, but then we got the results back. So this slide shows you kind of some numbers and what these numbers are is okay, when you get these results back and you have them vote one through eight or whatever they are on one being your first choice, eight being, how do you go through and you, you figure out which one is the highest priority or which one is the second, third, and fourth. So I did the, the golf approach where so if one was your um, your favorite one, you that's first first choice, well, then you got to score one. So the lowest numbers, when you added up all the total points that they got, was the one that was the highest priority in those. So if you look through there, after we got the survey results back, I think there's 84 um, that responded to the survey that we sent out. Um, we went through and we prioritized and find out what people want. So if you go through these, now you'll be able to see, okay, of these, um, which one we want to attack first? Okay, which one was the highest priority for the community and the respondents? So that's what the numbers represent there. The lower the number means that those were the ones that were the highest choice by the people that voted or that returned the surveys. So for each category, you guys go through and do that. And there's each screen shows each one of those. So then now we know where to head. Thank you. So before we get into the results, I just want to thank Jeff because I got to tell this story too. So we get the results back and we're on a limited time for when the next meeting is. So Michelle and I are looking at this. And I think we got this one. I think I think we're missing something. I just think we're missing. We gotta get a math teacher. I just call Shane Rock. He's gotta look at this, tell us what we're missing. So I go, I gotta go to a meeting, get we gotta get this done. So I leave and she meets the like, so he did a whole different way. Look at the guys, I knew we need a math teacher. I knew we need it. So we appreciate Jeff's work on this because not only did he do a great job facilitating and, and working with our members, he really helped us ensure that the integrity of the results are right and that we did this work in the right way. And I, I feel very good about having a team approach to this whole work that we do. And I, I said from the beginning when I started here, that we do things here as a team. And this was another reality of that and how important it was because our data is good. So now I can turn it over to you. If you want to click on this, Michelle, and open this, but you can mm -hmm. take us through. Bill and Joel. First two, whoops, last one. <clears throat> You miss class, you get stuck with whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, this is a slide for the world's best workforce. It makes up our student population. Uh, Ninety-six percent of our students uh, identify as white. Um, we have a very low minority population in this district, which isn't really um, surprised when you walk around our buildings. Um, the who makes up our teaching population? Uh, we have. Uh, 45% with bachelor's degrees, 55% with advanced degrees. I told the committee um, just on this data that there was a time where we were probably 70, 80, 85% bachelor's degrees and not a lot of advanced degrees. And that has that has changed. And that is a that is a good thing as, as our teachers advance their degrees and, and build expertise in the field of teaching. So and then uh, the, on the right side is the percentage of our teachers that are tenured, inexperienced teachers within the first three years is that gold color. Um, very excited about 0% ineffective. That means that there's teachers, we don't have any teachers that are on uh, some sort of improvement plan or pathway to improvement. 
and uh, out of field. Um, this is the one that I think we pay attention to in the next few years as the struggle for uh, securing teachers is we want to keep that out of field permissions down as much as we possibly can. Um, 4% is a, a little bit bump up from where we've been in the past. So. <laughs> That's our kindergarten, kindergarten readiness uh, goal from last year, uh, where our focus was on the screening of students before they came in, early childhood screening before they came into kindergarten. And didn't we have the goal for kindergarten yeah, this is, this is just our up? results. Okay. This is just what happened, how we finished. And there's the results from 21-22. Our goal was to get to 60% uh, in reading proficient, proficiency of third grade. And we did not make that goal. Uh, it actually decreased to 40.7%. This is our special ed students. And now it's uh, who partially meets, meets or exceeds. And our goal is to go from 52.3 to 60%. And we did not meet the 60%, but we did increase to 52.6%. So there was an increase. And this is for our students on free and reduced lunch. Again, uh, partially meets, meets or exceeds, and we are at 60.29 and our goal was 65%. And we actually succeeded our goal with that at 65.9%. Sarah Joel. Yeah, Joel. Uh, the college and career ready goal, uh, the percentage of students, this is meets or exceeds the standards in reading across the district would increase from 48.5 to 55. And while we did not meet the goal, we did make a jump to 52.4%. Uh, this is for meets or exceeds in math. The, the goal was from 42.8 and to get that to 50. And uh, the goal for 21 22 is 42.8 to 55. We did not get there, but we did make a jump to 51.5%. And then this one is the meets or exceeds in science uh, across the district, increased from 47.6 to 60. Uh, the science went up. It did not meet the goal, but it went up to 50.3%. Graduation rates. Um, all students who are eligible to graduate at Royalton Public Schools in four years will remain above 90%. Uh, students who successfully graduated in four years was at 90.5. Now that takes your number in October, this time of year, and who's ever in your seats here and counts as to who graduates at the end of the year. And so if you have a student who graduates, some happens and they graduate a week after graduation, it counts against you. Um, if they don't finish and they go somewhere else and there's no, they, that counts against you. Um, we still feel like it's important for us that the 90% of our kids who are, you're, you're always going to have some transition out and, and have some unforeseen difficulties and have some that I've had students who graduated 48 hours after the graduation ceremony. And I've had students that have come back and finished it two years after their graduation ceremony. So, um, but it does count as to who graduates there on time in May. So goal is 90%. Sorry. Okay, so if you want to want to talk about our new goals. Yes, this one's me again. <laughs> All right. So this is the new one. This is this is new data. As you can see, our population hasn't changed a whole lot. We're still at 96%. Um, the teaching, um, the teaching stuff is pretty much the same data as we had before 
uh, the, the, the makeup of the staff did not change a ton. So. Uh, working with the committee and getting uh, feedback from the leadership team, we decided to uh, get more specific and strengthen our kindergarten readiness goal. So we went from, uh, it's the same goal, 100% uh, of eligible kindergarten students enrolled in kindergarten uh, will be ready for kindergarten. But we decided to uh, use our preschool so that 70% of our students who attended preschool and are now in kindergarten, we are assessing them through FastBridge. And in the spring, our goal is 70% of those students will be in the low risk category. There's four categories, that's third from the top. So if you're low risk, you're doing very well. This is our third grade literacy goal. So we did not meet the goal, as I stated before, at 40.7%, but we still want to aim high and keep the 60% as our goal. So our goal is to move from 40.7% to 60% uh, for this year. Yes. So you think that's, and so obviously you think it's realistic, but that's going to be, do you, what do you, what do you think are they going to be the things that will get you to that, right? That, that will kind of push you to that, you know, going, obviously you don't want it down, but get you that now we're going for a 20% jump, which is almost, which is even harder, right? So what do you think are the things that will push you to get to that one? I think uh, two things, one, getting past COVID. If you were to ask me how our current third grade students are going to do, based on what I'm seeing and so many developmental needs, I think it's going to be a real struggle. So I think getting past that, but also getting our English language arts standards in place uh, and being used and applied, I think should make a difference. I'll use an example from our math standards, which we have in place. I observed our kindergarten, not our kindergarten, our first grade and second grade teachers in all those classrooms, they were all on the same lesson with the same project. They went about it a little differently, but that's how coordinated the pacing calendar is and the expectations. So I think we do have a new curriculum that we're using in reading. I think that's gonna help. I think getting the alignment with the standards and the integration standards and the pacing scales and the unit, unit planning. So I don't think we're gonna see a big increase. It might even drop in the spring, but I think the following year, uh, we should begin to see some changes. And to be honest, every grade level's a little different. So if we were to take our fourth or fifth grade, they may look much higher. This particular third grade, it's amazing. It's not that they're misbehaving students, but developmentally, it's hard getting them to focus and uh, concentrate. The way we well, like it. So that's that a great question. And could that be from missing out on school during COVID? Absolutely. I think so. And I think some groups that come through are just more challenging. That's probably, oh. probably the most, one of the most challenging groups we've had uh, in a lot of years. They're very good kids. And I think they're time they graduate from the school, I think they're going to be doing really well, but it's going to be a process of push getting them there. And I'd yeah. like to comment. So again, we did bring this to our district leadership team. And they set these goals. and. They were really saying, no, we want to stick with 60. We said, do we want to bring that down? They said, no. So if teachers are willing to sure. set that bar high, I think they go with it. Sure. I just think it's a lofty, challenging goal, yeah, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we agree. don't want to lose track of this. That's where we want yeah, to be. Absolutely. It might not be next year, but that's where we want to be and what we're going to get. Thank you. Thank you for really good questions. This uh, next is special education students. And again, partially meets, meets and exceeds. And uh, we ended up at 52.6%, which was an increase. Uh, so we made this goal, uh, to your point, Russ, a little bit more realistic, 52.6 to 55 uh, seems more doable. And this is the free and reduced price students. Uh, we ended up, I shouldn't say ended up, we achieved at 65.9, which is terrific. And uh, so if we can get that, 65.9 to 70 percent. That, that is excellent. I'd say we're 20 to 25 percentage points better than state averages for free and reduced students. So you look at our scores, there's areas where we really are doing well. It shows what's possible. 
So it's getting the whole system aligned to where it needs to be. Uh, okay. I'm so happy with that. Yeah. That all this work on alignment mm -hmm. is yielding results. Mm -hmm. You know, that they are, you're attributing results to all the work that's going outside of the classroom. You know, because there, there's a lot of work that's been put in in the last couple of years by teachers outside of the classroom. So it's, it's great to see. Uh, the college and career ready. This is meets or exceeds in reading across the district, uh, K through 12, 3 through 12, 48 and a half percent to 55. The reading increased to 52.5. Again, this was a goal where we set it more realistically uh, at 55 percent. Um, 42.8 to 55. And the goal was we didn't meet the goal, but we made it to 51.5, which I mean you're almost you're looking at a nine percent jump. Um, which is a, a very strong move positive in a positive direction. Uh, we set that goal at 55, 51 to 55 percent for this year. And then science 47.6 to 60, they got to 50.3. Um, and again, we set that goal from 50.3 jump that to 55 percent incremental jumps graduation rate i don't envision this changing when we do the world's best workforce every year 90 percent is a a realistic uh a realistic goal and it also provides you a stable baseline that you're looking at every year you know um that it's at 90 percent um, and then you did, you can take a look at the trend in the data um, on a cons with a consistent baseline of expectation that 90% of our students who are in the seats in October will graduate on time. I think so, another caveat to that I'd like to add is in a district this size, that can mean one student. And so it's not like where you have a larger N and you can have some of that fluidity. So it's real hard to set a goal at 90% when one person. Well, if one student doesn't make it, you can right? Yeah, that's yeah. Or somebody starts the year in and work then and, and then they oh life happens and they go to a fall yeah. or wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two, right. Thank you. Okay, so that again was the district leadership team, we brought that back to the strategic planning committee. We went through that report and they talked through those whole goals. And this is where we're at now coming back to the board when it comes to the world best workforce. So again, I this document that I'm going to show you now will be a living and breathing document. So this will change. It will be on the website, but it will change as our needs change so that it's not just a canned um strategic plan that nothing changes and so if it doesn't work you still do it even though it doesn't work or you know so this is a, a goal of a living and breathing document i put the vision at the top and the mission and then our core values important for us to remember um what those are i'm very excited about our core values i hope the core values last years and years and years into our future here i think we can put this everywhere because all of us can be held accountable to those core values whether we're adults children um, whether we're parents coming in to, to support us or, or even visitors that might want to come and watch a ball game. We could still look at these core values and say, when you're here, these are our values. This is how we how we do things here in Rome. If you go down the strategic priorities we've set. Now, we went through, and by the way, the who's responsible and the start date. This is where the committee really came in and did a lot of work at our last meeting and provided for us who they thought initially was responsible and initially when we could start this. Again, this may change. We may add people to the responsibility list to make sure to subtract or not, but this is where we began. So when we look at our kindergarten readiness. We, the group came up with administrators, teachers, parents, and community. We're doing that work. Same thing with literacy proficiency. Um, um, the achievement gap, um, all of those goals, college and career, those who were um, responsible to start dates were doing that. Mm -hmm. Keep going down to strategic priority number two. Again, remember we put those action steps in. So we put those action steps in the order from the survey and brought it back to them of who's responsible 
and then start dates. And as you can see with that first one, everybody wants this started in fall of 2023. Now that means starting how we might go with it. It doesn't, so for example, um, service learning opportunities. We start to get the group together. What opportunities could our students have for this year? We start thinking about it, start, start uh, strategizing how we're gonna actually do the work. It doesn't mean we're necessarily have a service learning project October of 2023, which is, it could be that they actually start the project in January or February. Keep going down to social emotional supports. And again, here's the action steps based on that survey when that's what came forward as important. When they looked at it as a team, they're like, well, more social workers, counselors, mental health and, uh, services. Well, our year has started. So they thought, well, maybe you can get someone hired for fall of 2024, but they put the onus on the administrator and the school board to determine whether this is something we can do. Um, and then you can see the other folks who are in support of doing some of this work. More celebrations in the newspaper, they want that immediately. That came back, but that should be happening consistently. And so we'll, we'll keep working on that. Um, strategic party four, highly effective communication. Again, we put whose role is what in there. Um, IT being our technology department, and then those start dates. And then strategic party uh, number five, so curricular and extracurricular, and then what are all those action steps? Who's responsible and when do they start? Again, making the student, student body aware of all sports and activities, immediate and ongoing, meaning some of these activities we're gonna start and we're gonna keep doing and they keep going all the time. So they'll routinely be checking in with students on what we're doing. Um, or what they would would like to have for sports and activities. It won't be just a one and done where you've completed and you don't do it again. So this is our initial start from the committee. Um, what we then have to do um, after we're, we start working on this is start putting the narrative in, the, in progress. What are we doing and what is the status of, of implementation and do we have any updates? That's the kind of work that we'll be filling in with narratives. And of course, we'll have dates in that narrative because it's really important to know that as of, for example, January of 2023, we're doing what have you. We have that narrative there. And that way we can bring it back to the board every month to see where we're at on this. But also most importantly is bringing it back to our strategic planning committee so that they can see and help offer other suggestions of how we might do something differently or improve upon. And, what this document will do for us as we start this work is say, well, we started a service learning project and we learned that they really could use something else. And we could then add that as another action step of now we're doing this and here's what it looks like. So I look at this as an ongoing document that's fluid and, and is, we don't lose anything. We keep the documentation. If we were to not do something, because let's say that kids are, uh, activity bus after athletic and activity practices. Let's say we do a survey and we find out no student wants that or needs that. Well, we wouldn't do that. We're gonna say not doing it because, but we don't remove it. So we have a history there. We don't lose our history, but we put in the comments why we might not be doing something. And as of the date, because we might find that out, let's say January of 2023, but now it's two years later, we're still working off this plan. We say, we need to revisit that again because things have changed, people have changed. We might go back and revisit and say, oh yes, we do actually need that activity bus. We should try that now. Now we're ready. So those kinds of things is where I see this being a more, um, a really user, a, a document that's, that's fluid. So um, I think, was that our end of our slide? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I can take any questions about this particular document or about any questions about any of the presentations. I'll start. So where that spreadsheet, where is that going to live? Is that going to be somewhere? It'll be online. Online. And it should be open to so anyone can see mm -hmm. that and be able to review that and you can see where that is. Okay, I have feedback on that. So. It's going to be the onus of all parties to review that document and ask yourself, am I trying to live to those standards? You know, like, you know, perhaps, you know, like the board is up there on, on some of that stuff. Perhaps the board has to review them biannually or something and say, what, what can we do to help these things? 
you know, it is our job as the board to, you know, just because we don't get asked for help, but maybe we gotta go out and find out if they need our help because there's things that we can do that in this boardroom that, that nobody else can do in the district. So you now I would suggest that all of leadership groups will have the same conversation like that. So mm -hmm. I don't think it should have to be a formal. Well, in January, we review it. You know, it's, it, it should be a guiding document. I just thank you to everybody who participated and from staff and students and community and everybody. So I, I like it. I think it's very well put together. I think we did a good set of meetings and we were able to filter out things and so we kind of got a concise list so I, I like it and I like that we can like you said it's living it's reasonable we can move things around we can push something if we need to bring it back later I like that a lot I really don't want it to be <laughs> something that we do that we all say now Royalton has a strategic plan and it sits on a shelf and then we don't look at it again and so i think this way um if we if we have have it as a a document that's malleable and a bill have ability to change um that will do us well and keep us grounded and keep us in the right direction we're all headed in the same direction mm -hmm. we know what's expected of us I don't know, for up to the heads of the departments that if there's something we need and it conforms to one of these values, that's the way to push it to the board. You know, if that air handler becomes a thing and I mean, that's part of it, you know, or, you know, it's all the needs. It should be pushed through that, that lens. Exactly. How does it align to Exactly. We want to do something. How does it align to the strategic plan? Yeah. Because if there's zero alignment, that should make us raise questions. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to say no, but it should raise a question of why is it that you want to do this when it doesn't have any bearing on the strategic plan? At least that's a question. Yeah. Yep. And it might be, well, the state told us we had to. <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 Other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. I'd piggyback a little bit off of what Director Ballman said and thank all the staff and people and your leadership team because I thought everybody there was did a great job. You were focused. You guys, you could tell you had talked about it. You were prepared. Um, I think it also gave community opportunities to meet others as well. Some of the teachers, you know, that can't say that I knew all that well. I got to see them and interact, and I thought everybody did a great job. So um, super excited about it. I think it was done right. I think it was done very well. So a motion to approve. Motion was made by Director Bauman. <clears throat> Is there a second? No second. Seconded by Director Lane. Any other discussion? about the approving of the strategic plan, including the world's best workforce plan. All right, hearing none, all in favor of approving the strategic plan with the world's best workforce plan, say aye. 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 Uh, opposed, abstain, motion carries 5-0. Thank you, yeah. Next is in the agenda is the SMS renewal contract discussion. Yeah, so I'll start us off with that and Dave, I may need some support from you as Scott was unable to be here tonight for this portion. Um, so our contract with SMS is coming up due for renewal and I'm proposing that we go ahead and renew SMS to provide our business management services. Um, I've been very, very pleased with the support we've received. Scott and Dave have both been wonderful to work with um, there. It's really nice to get budget reports monthly that make sense. It's We make decisions as a team, so they bring forward ideas, but they don't just bring forward information and says, I've already decided. We don't use that kind of language. We talk about it together. 
and it's gone really well. Now, one thing that they have supported us with and not really charged us for correctly is they've also given us payroll support. So as you know, um, we've hired Amy Kruger as our HR director and she does the bulk of the payroll. However, we have needed support from them as they've helped with training her, but also with just the, the way the work functions. So we had initially asked for some accounts payable support, but in reality, that wasn't necessary because we have a staff person that's been doing that and that process has worked okay. So they didn't do the accounts payable service for us, but they did support payroll. So moving forward, we'd like to continue with that support, but that would be um, instead of a $10,000 fee, a $20,000 annual fee for that support, which is to me still well, well worth it. Um, in the contract, it states a percent increase each year. So this would be a three-year contract, which is their standard contract with, I believe it's 2.5% increase each year which is very much in line with how we run salary increases. So um, we're looking for an approval tonight to continue our services with SMS and look at... Um, approval or just discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. We're going to wait on a... Good job, we, Michelle. To... we are going to have this discussion tonight, and I will bring this back in November for approval. <laughs> any discussion i would i would add that i think i would agree with dr workham holistically um working with sms has been very good um dave and scott do a great job questions they field them very quickly to give back information very promptly i mean they they've given us reports that um are like you said clear we understand um, I also enjoy, they have a great, you know, nucleus of other people they can tap into to know that, hey, you know, Royalton, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? You know, we're seeing other districts do this. I think that for a district our size has been um, great. Um, it's helped us. Um, and, I, and I imagine the, you know, if we decided to bring this back in house, the job market, the jobs haven't changed, right? So to find the challenge of finding a business manager that could do this and be as successful as SMS would be highly unlikely. So, or a challenge, how will I say that? A challenge, right? So I I think SMS is doing a, a great job as well, so. Yeah, I think, I believe they work with about 40 to 45 other districts. It's over 50 now. It's over 50 now. So you can see how they meet um, weekly as a team and talk about everything they're seeing. So it's absolutely a bonus to have all those different business managers in a room having a discussion. Mm -hmm. I've worked at three different places and we always had in-house business managers that had a couple of people to work with and they had to seek out those other business managers, like go to them. And that wasn't always as something that happened as often. You might go to a Masco conference um, but that just that relationship uh, was a little bit different than what SMS has by all being colleagues. And so, and that mandatory weekly meeting where they're getting that information. So it's just been really good. And I can't say enough to with the payroll support that they provided us. Um, we not only did Amy have to learn the position, um, but there was a lot of things that were set up that weren't as well thought out and as well designed as where they are now. Um, having the support of SMS, they were able to come in and say, you can do all of this and it's much easier, makes sense, and it's far more accurate. And so I feel very confident with the accuracy of our payroll. I feel very good about um, our, when our staff are paid, it's accurate. And I, I just haven't had complaints from staff since we've gotten this all in shape. And so we needed SMS support to do that, and I really appreciate it. And it's nice, I can, <laughs> I do appreciate the availability because I can't tell you the number of 7 a.m. <clears throat> meetings I have over the phone with them. And I mean, I, I feel like sometimes I get to work and I've had- While you're driving? Yeah, it's awesome. I get to meet with my finance manager, I meet with board member, I get a lot done. So I tell him that it's very nice. I've had Saturday meetings where we can just sit at home on Google and get stuff done. Um, it's just been really nice. Text, uh, always accessible seven days a week. And that's just been really nice. I'll say it's one of the best moves you've made as far as I've been on. So that's my personal opinion. So 
So he wants to dispute it, they can, but it's it's like hiring a whole army of people that you know have all their experiences, and that's just that's a great thing. So So is that the discussion that we were going to have now? Is that it? Because you don't need a motion, right? Or Correct. No, okay. just a discussion. We're just beating the horse, Mary. Right. That's what I thought. I, <laughs> I would rather well, it didn't, but okay. This was, you know, kind of our policy. We like to see things twice, right? So we we'll make sure everybody has the opportunity to review this, ask questions, and then next in November, we'll bring it back up again. Thank you. All right, if there's no other ones, we'll move on to approval of the prom venue and transportation. Oh, Mr. Shaw. Uh, prom, um, just with everything going on in the spring, was hard to nail down a date. We got state for speech, and we've got. Um, nationals for bpa potentially and there's there's a lot of different things going on and they had talked as a group and then they said well let's settle on this date well and it realized it was speech states instead and then you can't get too far into may before it's um too late in the year so they settled on a menu um and at coyote moon and um, it is slated for uh, the 6th of may They had this last year. Yeah. Just, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Menu. I'm going to go super late. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. Yes. Sunday brunch. Awesome. They, they, they try to go, they try to bounce around. They wanted to bounce around a couple of different places, but in the end, this is this is what worked best for us. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not, you're not going to Detroit Lakes. You know, no. That's a long bus ride. Yeah. And then do a couple years. And, and this is, this is convenient. It's near. It's, Good food, kids enjoy it. So longer on the way home than it is there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so they are looking for approval. Are there questions on this for Mr. Newman? Make the motion to approve. All right. Mr. Chairman, I'll second that motion. <clears throat> So the motion was made by Director Roaring and seconded by Director Hackett. Is there a discussion on this topic? All right, hearing none, approval of the prom venue and transportation. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, mm -hmm. abstain. Motion carries 5 0. Donations by resolution. Would somebody be willing to introduce this resolution? So long. Member Hackett. Hello. Member Hackett introduced the following resolution and moved its adoption, whereas all information is scheduled in your packet. The Royals Wrestling Club has generously donated $1,000 to the girls' basketball program to be used for materials, oh, excuse me, used for supplies and materials, whereas the conditions on this gift be included in the packet, therefore be it resolved by the Royalton School Board to gratefully accept the gift. The motion for adoption of the foregoing resolution was duly seconded by member Roaring. And upon roll call vote being taken, thereupon the following voted for. Who's the vice chair? The, you get to do a roll call, young lady. I'm going to be out of it. Yeah, very good. Write it down, lady. <laughs> Aye. Director Hackett. Aye. Uh, Director Lane. Aye. Director Roaring. Aye. Can you tell me now? No. Okay, Director Bauman abstain. Uh, so the following, <laughs> the following voted against, the following abstain. So the motion carries 5-0. That's one of the fuzzy half one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
The reading continues. Uh, resolution of governing board supporting uh, Form A application to Minnesota State High School League Foundation. Whereas the Minnesota High School League Foundation was formed to support for Minnesota's high school youth to participate in ath ath oh boy, athletics and fine arts. Whereas the governing board of Royalton Public Schools Independent School District 485 recognizes the value of student participation in extracurricular activities. And whereas the Minnesota State High School League Foundation is offering grants and funding to assist schools in recognizing, promoting, and funding extracurricular participation in high school students in athletic and fine arts programs. Therefore, be it resolved by the governing board of Royalton Public Schools Independent District School District 45 supports the school's application to the Minnesota State High School League Foundation for a Form A grant to offset student activity fees. So that is the form. I guess I need approval, motion and approval to Almost. for us to sign. Almost. No second. Motion was made by Director Baum and seconded by Director Ling. Any discussion? Maybe you want me to read it again? No. Mary, it looks like she's... All right. I know. All in favor of approving uh, the Minnesota High School League Form A resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries 5-0. Approval of student council overnight trip to Cragen's. <clears throat> Chairman Garrett, members of the board, Superintendent Wehrkamp, uh, this is a uh, student council state leadership forum mm -hmm. on uh, November 6th and 7th, and it's at Cragen's because it's overnight. Uh, it needs board approval for them to attend this. Uh, the seven students attending. Um, looking for ways our student council advisor looking for ways to get our students more involved in the state associations for student council there's some really good training and growth activities that, that come from these opportunities and so i uh i fully support uh, the student council looking for ways to help our students be proactive in in learning the roles of what a student count being a student council member means so we are bringing this tonight for approval for that trip because it's overnight to Dragons on the 6th and 7th of November. I do have a question. So this is a lot like the question I gave to Phil. So when they come back, are they gonna be afforded the time to disseminate what they've learned to other people? For sure to the council. Yeah. I think they're still learning, you know, in these new experiences you go to it and you find out what you've learned and, and how to bring that back and how to integrate it into your student council program. So I definitely think there will be some outreach as the students come back. I don't know that they know what to expect going to this because they've never done it before. Yep. Okay. Yep. But for sure it is it is it is meant to grow the civic responsibility of your student council. I mean that's what these state forums are these state leadership council things are for is to is to grow the ability of your student body to so they'll surely have, hey, if you've never been to one of these, this is the thing you learn for, right? I mean, that's Correct. the way that things work. So and you learn from other councils and other, you know, you're gonna have advisors, might be 30, 40 schools that, that attend this thing at Craigans, and and you're learning what other student councils are doing, how they're getting involved in their schools, how student government, um, how they how the students have an impact on the student affairs that happen within their own buildings and they can gain ideas and uh, you want your student council to be more than just planning the homecoming dance and doing homecoming week. You want them, you want them advocating for uh, curriculum, for equipment, for things that they'd like to see in their school, and 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 their voice is very important. This helps develop that. Is there, is that in PBIS is student leadership part of that too? Oh, certainly. At some point, certainly, you know, especially you know, as you. If 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 our expectation is when you see a garbage can tipped over in the hallway, our expectation is that you pick it up. If I say it the first time in May, I would love to have 20 students that just they either pick it up or 
or they pick it up themselves or, or the expectation is that someone is just going to go by and eventually it comes to the point where if a garbage can's tipped over they don't even think about it just put it back up and put it back in place and so that type of involvement with those types of activities is exactly what we want to see with our kids so like seven candidates to be or the student representative on the board as well <laughs> they may cover some of that right in state leadership would be as well. yeah it would Do be, it would be fun for them to come and demand it yeah <laughs> how do they pay for it, joel is it coming out of Dues? Is it coming out of funds they've raised? Yeah, students. I mean, they have the, you know, they fundraise, you know, the dances and things okay. like that are, are fundraisers for student council. The nice thing, Joel, about this from somebody who has tried to run for queen of the world but hasn't gotten it yet. But I have, yeah. I have really, because I got into um, politics in a very young age. I think it's good for kids to get involved and to know they have a voice, not just in high school, but so far beyond. And, you know, it's just that you don't have to be sweet and as high gluten as I am. <laughs> but, you know, you can really do great things with your life and your time. And I, I just think it's a great precursor for that. It really is. You don't have to be afraid of running for office. Right. I mean, all I can do is lose, right? Hey. Or even to the idea of not being afraid to share your own, to share your ideas and thoughts. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. What grade level are these seven students? Uh, this would be the high school student class, nine through 12. So but, are they from nine to 10 to 11? I don't have the breakdown of the seven students. Um, they would all have obviously parent permission and mm -hmm. stuff involved with that in the first place. But um, my guess is that these are probably at the upper levels of junior senior the leadership positions in the council just curious how did these seven get selected or did they volunteer i think there was some interest some interest into it it is deer hunting opener which is yeah <laughs> take uh, out a national holiday yeah national holiday or at least state sure. holiday yeah. well that takes some kids out now yeah. Yeah. <laughs> seven more safe deer in the woods yeah um <laughs> they're uh there was some in, there was some gauging of interest of that group. How much did it approve? Second, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Any other discussion or questions for Mr. Swenson? Okay. All in favor of approving the student overnight trip to Cragen, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Item H, approval of the purchase of a wheelchair accessible van. Right. So I am bringing this forward. We have a student um, who is in, utilizes a wheelchair, and we don't have a transportation vehicle for that particular student. So we need to purchase this as we are required to give transportation to students with disabilities. This van purchase, however, allows... Um, is not the require the CDL license that you would for a school bus driver. So others, uh, you don't have to go to that right extent of rigorous training in order to drive this van. So we are looking to purchase this van, which allows us to now transport the student to school every day. Can you place more than one wheelchair student in this van, or is it only fit for one? Great question. It has tight items for one. Was it just one? Is it? Have you looked around? Yes. We've looked extensively. Uh, yeah. uh, this marker is, 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 is a very. Oh, I know. It's, it, yeah, I know what it's yeah. like, but it's just that, yeah. you know, sometimes I think they see a school district coming, all right? They really do. And they figure you've got this unlimited pot of gold. And, you know, that's just my take. Because that seems like a bit of money. It is. Yeah, fifty-two thousand five hundred bucks. Yeah, this is for a, uh, so it's a minivan size with a ramp. Right. All ADA right. Compliant, I, yeah. um, and all the re all the required components um, there within. If we went to the next size up, which would be a full size one time chassis type of van, um, your cost would double. All right. Okay. You know, you can buy an old house for that price. You know yes. that, right? 
Just a second. Oh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. I'd like to move the van. Okay. There's a second. Okay. Motion was made by Director Hackett, seconded by Director Roaring. Is there further discussion or questions? I still think that's an awful lot of money, but. <clears throat> I bet if we waited three months, it'd be more. Or if the recession hits, we won't be I'm just saying. Well, that's or, the way or, things are. But I think the the real listing. Well, I think the foregone co conclusion is we have to support this child, right? Absolutely. I mean, we have no choice of not moving forward. So I think the question is probably which court do you go with, right? And I think the advice court was actually the. Yeah, the less expensive sure. at the moment. Mr. Chair, I, sure. I changed that. According to our strategic plan, we should want to help this child and transport this child, not have to. Great point. So Thank you. We have, we want to. We so. absolutely do. Other discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor of the approval of the purchase of the wheelchair accessible van, uh, the quote that the recommended quote say aye. aye, aye, opposed, abstain. Motion carries five zero. Approval of health, uh, approval of the change of health benefits broker. So currently we use USA to handle all of our insurance brokerage needs. That includes um, our health benefits for our staff, as well as our casual and property. We have two different brokers, but both housed under USI. Um, one broker handles the property casualty workman's comp. The other one handles the health benefits. On the health, health benefits side of the world, we're not feeling that we're getting the service that we were hoping to get for a 3% cut of the premium that that particular broker receives. So we are looking to move to um, a broker that uh, works with small districts. Um, USI is a very, very large company. They work with lots of very, very large industry. Um, this particular um, broker that we'd like to move to, um, her name, I'm going blank on her name. Sandy, what's her last name? Wine LLC. Um, she works with small school districts. And so she would be willing to come on board right away um, and she would support us um, with the, the handling of open enrollments and all of that. Whereas at this point, we do all of the work. USA um, has been taking a lot of the premium um, 3% versus what most people get is around two, two and a half. And he's that set up as a 3%. And so we're looking to change to the broker and um, are looking for approval. Sandy Weiland. Why would you look to make the change? Um, well, I'm going to meet with, I would meet with him and just discuss if there's any issues, but it would be right away. We just have to send a letter of notification to the actual Blue Cross Blue Shield who have their current insurance and they just know the broker and then we go forward with the new broker. Does this actually change any benefits? No, just, it has just, nothing to do with that. It's just, just the, the interface between us and Blue Cross Blue Shield or whatever group we end up with. So example, we were recommended to not go out for bid. It's a hit a year. In state legislation, you're required to go out for bid every two years, and um, we were, were asked that we didn't think he didn't think it would be worthwhile to do that. So we went. You have to get approval by union representative of the largest collective bargaining group. So our group would be teachers, and they proved that yes, we we agree. We don't need to go out for bid. So we went back to our same person, and the increase was twenty five percent. So we thought. We got to go out for bid just to see. It could very well be that we'll get a 25% increase from other um, offers, but we need to at least check. Um, he still resisted that in a large way, and we just felt this is taxpayer money. This affects our staff. Um, we have to at least go see what other people have. So he did finally um, acquiesce to that. And so we did go out for bid. We have not received those bids back yet. The date uh, to open those isn't um, yet. It comes in the next week or two that we'll do that. So it just didn't feel the support we were hoping to get from a broker didn't feel there. And so we thought if we move to this other person, um, we will go out to it every two years, like legislation states, so we won't worry about that. 
And then how did we find out about this new books? Great question. So SMS um, has, works with this particular broker with other districts in there, working with the 50 districts and have had really good success. She gives great customer service again. She's small. Um, she works with small districts. She gives um, lots of really good customer service and support. And they've been working with her. Different staff on SMS have been working with her in other districts for several years. Giving great reviews. This is new for me. I'm just curious, since you're in the bid process, what happens if it comes back in the next week or two and you want to go forward with something and, and you're also looking at changing brokers? Do we start the bid process over? Like, no. how we, that all I do is all we have to, I would send him a letter that we're no longer engaged with him and we go ahead and work with her. It's, it's, a, it's a very smooth process. You can reuse the bids. Which the bids are the bids. They okay. don't have anything to do with the broker. It's about we had to go out for bids. These are the people who think bids. So, for example, remember last time I did the milk and dairy, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. dairy and bread bids. Um, we had several that we reached out to, and they didn't put a bid in. They're like, we don't want to bid on this. So that happens. So we they reach out to different um, insurance companies, and some will come back with a a quote, and some will say, no, we don't. We're not interested in you. And then those that come back, some will come back, and we're hoping somebody comes back with a lower than 25% increase. Our hope. And they might not. We can't guarantee anything with that part. Chair that Bible? Bible? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Rickham, I know it wasn't long ago we actually did change providers. Is there um is there any ramification for us to continue to change? So now you know, this one starts off, let's say, really well, and we like them, and then over the next course of a year, you know, maybe we, we're less excited about them again. Is there, is there any any ramifications if we decide to change again, anything there, or it just... Let me help answer that. It's <laughs> the cost of doing business and trying to stay as competitive as possible. So the broker really doesn't matter. We really are working with the insurance companies. There are insurance companies. They are kind of the middle person. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you from my perspective to change numerous times. It's not, my hope is that employees don't notice the change. I will notice the change. It's going to be work. But in this case, it is absolutely, in my opinion, worth it um, to make the change um, because I I believe for from what we're hearing that this new broker can bring on, they're gonna be helping do some of the, the heavy lifting that happens during open enrollment, getting um, staff enrolled, um, getting them enrolled accurately. Last year, I ended up auditing. We, we had our group, um, our broker help with a little bit of that. Their help meant I en ended up going back and had, having to audit our bills five different months and five different months they were wrong. Um, so it wasn't super helpful. So that's the kind of thing that we're really looking to have help with um, and have heard great things about this company. Do we have any, so of those schools, did were we able to contact any of them? Did they talk about this is a good company? I haven't, I didn't talk to any of the schools. I did talk to the person that I work with payroll and HR wise, mm -hmm. and she's the person who is kind of me and other through SMS in other districts, they don't have an HR person. And she is completely happy with all of the work. She said she's been doing HR work for a number of years and she has never worked with someone that she would trust more than this person. And Scott Ryan also has uh, supported that conversation as well with me saying, yep, absolutely. She's one girl. Mr. Chair, Director. this seems like a business decision. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bow down to the ones that seem to know what they're talking about. So I will move this. Second. So the motion was made by Director Hackett and seconded by Director Bauman to approve the change of health benefit to prove the change of health benefits broker to move to MDL Corporate Benefits Inc. as the new health benefits broker. Is there any other discussion on that topic? All right, all in favor of the move, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, motion carries 5-0. Approval of update to teacher sub pay rates. It's me again. Um, so if you can click into that presentation. 
Um, I didn't totally follow this presentation when I reviewed it. Well, so. I'll hopefully help answer right, your question. You. So, um, so currently, this is what our substitute pay structure looks like. For hourly employees, which include our custodians, food service, paras, and secretaries, they are placed at the zero step of the current year salary schedule for that position. So zero step, zero years um, experience. The teachers, if you're a daily or like a short call sub, so you're picking up you know, a day here and there, you might be picking up to as many as 14 days in a row, you're still called short call. Um, those subs, how the structure is for paying those subs right now is currently when you work one to 30 days consecutive, not consecutive, but in a school year, you're paid $120 per day or $15 an hour if you break it down um, <clears throat> by the eight hours. 31 to 60 days of subbing in the school year, it moves to 135 days or $16.88 an hour. And then 61 plus days subbing in a school year, it's $150 per day or $18.75 per hour. So that's for short call subs. Keep in mind, um, our para positions, we now start at like $14.37 an hour for our paras. So we're putting, when you look at hourly, our subs, that's where we've got them in the $15 an hour range. Um, and finding subs has been historically difficult. The long-term subs, so those are the subs that are covering a maternity leave, a general leave, a, you know, it could be a whole school year, but it's typically those longer periods of time, um, you know, 12 weeks, that sort of thing. What we do with those subs is they start at the BA, so the bachelor's step, um, zero step of the teacher salary. So currently that's $219.80 per day. And then it's prorated for their duty days. So they're paid kind of a per day um, when they work. And then we prorate it for how many days that they're going to actually be employed. Questions on how we currently do this? Okay. So then I did some research into looking at area subs because we had such difficulty last year finding subs. Um, and I know it was COVID and all that other stuff, but I still thought, gosh, I want to see what others are doing. So if you look at, again, Royalton on the top in the, in the gold, that's what I just went through with you. Little Falls, if you look at, they do some, something similar where they do the, hundred, the one through 30 days is $135 per day, but they break theirs down into $67.50 for a half day. So anything that's four, day, four hours or less, they just pay them that $67.50. They don't break down hourly. Well, well, I guess they do, but it's, sorry, this one they do break down hourly. And then it's $20.76 per month. Retired teachers, and they just call them retired teachers. They don't specify which, if it's their district or just a retired teacher, they, um, those retired teachers are paid $145 per day or $72.50 per half day or the $22.30 for, um, per hour. And then there's documentation that's required. Those are all for short-term subs. Um, Long-term subs, you can see again, one through 30 days is the $155 per day. And then 31 plus days, um, in a year is 90% of a, the bachelor's bachelor of science step one. Peers does things a little bit different. They're $130 per day, and then they only do the 130 per day or half day. So if it's anything four hours or under, they pay them a half day. If you're there one hour, you get four hours of pay. If you're there three hours, you get four hours of pay. And then that's for short-term subs. And then for long-term subs, they do the bottom step, which is the low step, the zero step of the teacher salary, much like we have been. Um, Foley is $130.56 per day, and then they also do the half day and then an hourly for their short-term subs. Long-term, it's um, $269.06 per day. Foley Ford is $130, um, and then they do, for their retired teachers, they bump it to $130 per day. And then um, their long-terms, they put them up. It's negotiated um, between the district and the long-term sub. Again, partially because in an instance where we can't find a math long-term sub who's really, really hard to find, but yet, and we want some, there would be some flexibility in that sort of a, a position. We could offer them a little bit more. So that is um, what the pay structure looks like for other districts. And then I went to some bigger schools just to kind of see they're again close to us. I know we're not the same size as them, but they're close to us. So we do have to compete with them for subs as well. Um, we have Sartell pays $150 per day, $75 per a half day, which is under four or four hours, four hours or under. And then their Sartell retired teachers are $200 per day or $75 for half day. 
I didn't get information back on the long-term subs. Both of these districts use um, um, teachers on call. And so they didn't have, they didn't give me that information for Sartell. Sock Rapids, um, they're $140 per day, $70 per day for the four hours and under. And then if you're a Sock Rapids retired teacher, it's $150 per day. And then their long-term sub is the bottom step of the teacher salary. So I feel pretty good about where we're at with our long-term subs and how we're doing our long-term subs. We seem to be pretty in line with what's happening in the other districts Districts for the most part. Um, but here's our recommendations. I brought this to our um, our um, leadership team, our um, admin team, and we talked about this. And our recommendation would be that um, we keep this hourly subs the same because that seems to be pretty in line. We actually, when I compared them um, with other districts, we actually pay our hourly subs better than most of theirs do. Typically their hourly subs for um, custodial and food service and those kind of positions are about $2 less than what they get paid, what, what somebody who's hired gets paid. So I feel pretty good about what we're doing with our hourly staff. The long-term sub teachers, um, what our recommendation would be is that we add in some language that says um, basically the salary schedule placement is negotiated between the district and the long-term sub. Again, allowing for some flexibility in those hard to find positions. Um, we find a long-term sub that has a great number of experience um, and we're really struggling to find that person. We could offer them a little bit more in pay to bring them on. And then also, for our short-term sub teachers, what we would, what our recommendation would be is to move it to $140 per day, um, and then $150 per day for a Royalton retired teacher, and then move to that away from the one through 30 and away from the hourly, and just move to $70 if it's four hours or under. That was a lot of information. Ready for questions? Yes. <laughs> so when we got when we did this one to 30 days, 31 to 60, we were trying to provide continuity in the classroom with the same people. What happens if we approve this and somebody's got 29 days in for the year already or got 20 days in and ends up doing 30, you know, what happens this year? Because we've already started the year. Mm -hmm. What happens with that? Because maybe they were, maybe they were subbing thinking, oh, I'm going to get to that 31 days and or 32, 31 days, you know? Yeah. And I just wouldn't want somebody to feel like they got, they left something on the table because we changed our policy mid-year. Mm -hmm. So you're saying what we could do rather than 140 a day is 150. Or maybe. I don't know. It, is is there somebody that would be close that to close? that? No. I mean, we have, we have one, I'd have to, I'd have to look for sure. We have one sub that is super, um, well, I would just say that loyal to us. I would just say that if we have somebody that would would meet that, that we go back for the days that they already taught and compensate the difference. For that. Yeah, just just for this year, just for well, it, not somebody that started subbing tomorrow, or you know, they got their days in already, and then they they meet that goal because if they're loyal to the district and they know this is the policy and that's how they got paid last year, they're willing to come here because. They thought this this was coming and then we can't take it away. Did did any subs last year get to the 60 days? One. One did? Mm -hmm. Did oh, I, I was gonna say do and I, we can't have anybody right now that's 30 to 60 mm -hmm. because we've hardly been in school that long, no. right? And so the the difference is you're you're paying all of them twenty dollars more right away. Right, right away is the is the difference. Mm -hmm. I just worry about the time that's put mm -hmm. in already. That's all I'm worried about. Yep. Is there a reason why you, I mean, we call it Royalton Retired Teacher? Well, I do. Jumped, we really? I jumped in. On. Yeah, I think it, it's important that that a teacher who retires coming back to our knows our students, knows our building, knows our leadership, knows our administration. So to give them um, that incentive to want to come back and sub for us versus going to a neighboring district, mm -hmm. I think is a benefit. Um, just because you're, if you retired out of Little Falls, I'm not sure why. That should get additional dollars here in Littleton. I can see Little Falls getting that, and my experience has been that's what we do. Um, other districts 
that I'm familiar with, that's what they'll do is they'll give that incentive to their own retired teachers to come back because they know they already know. Are all short-term subs typically retired teachers? No, 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 no. You can get a short-term like license. If you have a four-year degree, you can get a short-term college. Is there any reason why we wouldn't give a retired teacher more than just a average sub? You know what? I don't want to say average because you write retired teacher has much more experience, right? Than somebody who yeah. doesn't. Well, they don't have to write the lesson plans. They don't have to do mm -hmm. any of that. The, the bulk of the work. Usually the teacher leaves that for them to follow. So that's part of it. The other thing, having substituted a lot in a lot of districts, they used to say one to 30 consecutive days, not just one to 30 days. So you didn't get to pick them up piecemeal. Mm -hmm. It was one to 30 consecutive days. So I don't know. So we don't, so you, you would, from your experience, you don't feel like a retired teacher from any district is more advantageous than somebody else. And it all depends well, on know, the person, what if, you're thinking. If it's, uh, you know, Molly, the bad lady, you know, wow. and right. she's, she's subbing in your school and she's not very good with children. Here, you know, I'll throw that out for you. Well, how do you know they're retired? <laughs> you know, how do you know they weren't fired? How do you know they're retired? Well, so I well, at least you have too. you know. would have that documentation, but sure. otherwise, how would you how would, well royalty because, you'd know royalty you would. Getting. Yeah. But, but otherwise you don't always know. Like the reason, like in one school district, I worked every day of the year as a sub. As a sub every day of the year. <clears throat> That's just how it worked, you know. I didn't sub for the same classes every day, but I subbed that whole season. So the other the other comment I would say that I think this is something obviously that we should probably review every year or at least every other year, right? Because at one time when Randy and I remember when we did the other one, we felt like, <laughs> oh, we were being really competitive. Mary, you probably remember too. We yeah. felt pretty good about what we offered, but that was what two years, two or three years ago. And well, since then, obviously, everybody else has cut like up. Ninety dollars a day, or yeah, something and I jumped thought, us. So, ooh, that's not going to fly long. But you know. so I just yeah, that would be my they only hook. Maybe ask for the administration. So make sure we so remind us that. Say that, Russ. Should this be hooked to the like like this one is to the powers that be like that one is oh to the contract. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just great. I I knew I knew what you were going to say there, but. I really like this recommendation. <laughs> no, no, but we should ensure, though, that we, we review can, it. But we could bring it back every other year. Yeah. Right? And I definitely and that, feel like as an HR person, right. that is my role, is to keep an eye on what's right. happening in the in, around us. And if we're really having a hard time finding subs, my question should, I, I mean, I feel like it's my responsibility to ask why. Yeah. Right. And when I started to look at the why, here's what I found. Mm -hmm. If we really want to ensure that we get subs right and, and you want to get quality feel, subs right, yeah too you don't want to get molly though. so if we feel like this is going to get us quality subs i feel I like it's a step will. in the right direction definitely i i also believe that i've been in a few different districts royalton kids are really good kids and so it's a fun place to be i think subs enjoy coming here um so i don't think we have to be you know, the top paying, but I do think we have to stay competitive. Michelle, can you go back one slide? Because I wanted, to, or uh, two <clears throat> slides for this one. Because I really do, I sort of echo something that Director Hackett has talked about. We should be doing everything we can do to stay with our, you know, new strategic plan, right? So ensuring we get the best, I know, I would love to say we're getting the best subs out there, right? So it looks like yeah. we're we're pay wise we should be getting at least the best you know have the opportunity to get the best subs. That's right. Pay is no longer an obstacle. Right, and I, I can tell you it's. I was just uh, talking with my our oldest and his uh, significant other. They both are more teachers. She's now in higher ed and. He went into the private sector and his own business now because pay was low as, as teachers. Right. When I talked about our 
teach because I said, I really need a long term asset. You want to come teach? Come on, Eric. You know, come over. He goes, I'm slow stage. I go, Well, we can help you. Come on. You, do this. you know what? We need long term. So, and he said, How yeah. much do you pay? That's and I right. told him, He said, Nope. No. So, knowing that right now, and we're not those large districts, but there are districts paying upwards of $200 a day to get us up. In fact, I believe I last heard one metro district paying for us. So we aren't that, we don't need to be that, but I do think $15 an hour for a teacher doesn't feel right. And that's kind of where we're at right now. And I think this makes us So this is just going to start a conversation though. It's going to go right into contract negotiations. I, that I is hate to true. tell everybody, but you, That's true, Randy, yeah. that will happen. It, it's, it's all coming. And sure. and nobody's wrong on it. That's the no, problem. No. I wish we I wish we had a vault of money that we could just break open and say, hey, but that does give me another question. How much do we spend each year? Do you have an idea of how much we spend each year on subs? I could calculate it. But I, I, I'm just interested because I know at one time we had talked about it. I would love to hear it again at some point. Well, so, I'm in favor of getting rid of the muddy language. Yeah. However, it's there already. So anybody that would have hit one of them thresholds, I would expect that, you know, if they've got 15 days in and they hit six, 30, 32 days, I would expect that we're going to compensate them the dollar eighty eight an hour for 30 days. Well, I think we're already paying them more, right? Because they would actually get, now we're No, because to... they don't have, they've not met that threshold yet. But if by the end of the year they they mm -hmm. reach that threshold, yeah, but I look at it. How do you know nobody would start tomorrow and make that threshold? But. Well, because they're going to be getting paid more. If we if we pass this, that that would change their pay. I don't know that you can justify doing it for one, thinking that okay, you've already. That's not And it's up. It's not. I know. It's not a. Which I get are important. I'm not saying that, but I just think we make the if we make the cut, we make the cut, and this is how we do it from now on. I have a question though. I thought some of the sub tier rate was in some of the contracts. Like, wasn't it in the teacher contract? Like, do we have to go look at the language there? I don't think it's I think in that's contract. You might be thinking like if they cover a class or something. That's yes. There was definitely yeah. a lot of yeah. reference. There is a few last yeah. they talked about yeah. like sub tier rate. Can you look that at the contract? contract. Mm -hmm. We do. Have, I mean, there is a building. Like, it, it isn't. It doesn't say building sub, but there is some language around our building subs, like our mm -hmm. everyday, all day subs, and who up where they if they qualify for um, benefits and that sort of thing, but yeah. there's not language regarding. Okay, as long as we're not crossing over some yeah. of that language, I'm definitely for the pay raise. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. 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 No, I don't disagree. <laughs> and your point, Randy, about the, about, um, negotiations for sure but when you look at the our bottom step of our ba0 is paid 219.80 a day yeah that i mean when you do the calculations and break that down that's how our long-term subs are paid so there is a big difference between a sub that's and amazing. that bottom step of a ba a bachelor's prepared teacher <clears throat> i'm still lost in what short-term sub means Short term, zero through 30 days. 30 days yeah. or, sorry, zero so through 29. 14 days consecutive okay. is what you can work. So right now, so our math person right now has a short call license because, and he's, we're also, we also are working on an auto field. So they can work like 15 days in a row or 14 days in a row. So they, do they commit to that 14 days right away? Is that what that is? They Short call, typically they don't, I mean, there isn't a lot of, they commit to a long period of time like that. That's kind of atypical. That would be more of the long-term stuff. So like a maternity leave or a paternity leave, um, so, that sort of thing. So do we have subs that have committed and then we don't need them at no. times? No, 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 no. Okay. I know that they go on ASAP or whatever, and that, that's about all I know about it. Yep. I, I don't even punch a time clock, so I, I don't know any of this stuff. So I just. Yep. Our staff member puts out a whenever they are going to be gone. 
sub goes in and can pick up that position. If that absence gets canceled, the sub position gets canceled as well. Doesn't happen super often. Excuse me, please. So can we? Yeah, let's vote on this as Mary's leaving because she's got to get out of here. I do. So I love it. Director Second. Hackett, <clears throat> any further discussion? Motion was made by Director Hackett, seconded by Director Bauman to approve the update to the teacher pay sub rates. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. So do we need to reflect that in our meeting minutes that? Yeah, so just to be clear, Director uh, Lane needs to step out or she will has She's left leaving. the meeting. So at 810. And we are still okay to approve. Yes, four of us. We still have a majority. So for um, so with that, we will then move on to policy reading. So we have two that are for uh, the first policy reading. It's 516, uh, student medication, and 721, uniform grant guidance. No, Director Hackett, do you want to say anything about those? No, that were new. I, I'm, I got You're, right here. Good. So <laughs> anybody take a look, please provide Anybody on the policy committee, uh, Director Hackett, Director Hofstad, or Lane, on any of that, uh, any feedback? We also have a number of policies that are our third policy reading and looking for approval. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'd like to move for the approval and adoption of policy number 419, 520, 520 form, 603, 609, 709 and the 709 form. Okay. Is there any discussion on those policies? All right, all in favor of approving policies 419, 520, 520 the form, 603, 609, 709 and the 709 form. Please say aye. 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 Uh, uh, opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 4 0. All right, that moves us to uh, item 11, the upcoming meeting schedule. Uh, the next meeting will be Wednesday, November 9th. We will have a policy meeting at 2 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, November 15th, we will have, at noon, we'll have a finance meeting. Tuesday, November 15th, we will have a special board meeting to canvas the election results. And Monday, November 28th, 6 p.m., the regular board meeting. Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. stop this. Motion was made by Director Baum and seconded by Director Hackett. <laughs> To adjourn the meeting, any discussion? Just one board member can stop this, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned at 8.13 p.m. <laughs>